Hi everybody, this is Chalisa. Thank you so much everyone for coming back to my channel and if you're listening in the podcast, thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to speak about a situ- uh, an incident that happened, a case I guess I can say that happened early this week and this took place in New Jersey. And before I continue, I want to tell you that this is very uh, sensitive subject and I know especially in January you know during the winter time there's people who deal with a lot of stuff you know everybody's dealing with something if you turn around you start speaking to people there are always people um, dealing with stuff and I know it's like a, a yearly thing also beginning of the year um, people also think to think uh, you know new year resolution things like that and you start analyzing your life and another year has passed and what have you accomplished so I got to give you this warning before you continue to listen into this or watching this that I'm going to speak about a sensitive subject including somebody harming themselves and harming the people that they love okay so um, if you you're dealing with something similar maybe this is not the video that you want to watch right now but i am going to say me being a christian a a believer in jesus christ let me just start by saying this right there's nothing that in life that doesn't have a resolution and you know except for for death right that's why we tell you all the time as a believer in jesus christ get your heart right with god because um that's the only thing that's going to matter at the end of the day right um everything in life has a solution everything in life has a solution a lot of the times we think there's um there's no way out right and that's what the enemy does he plays with your mind and he tells you you know there's no way out and you know let me just tell you there's always a solution okay pray to your creator pray to god in jesus name if you're dealing with something difficult okay god knows that we make mistakes god knows that we're not perfect and god knows you know his love and mercy will carry us just confess anything that you have done anything that you're dealing with you know like i said there's nothing that you cannot there's nothing so terrible that you have done that God cannot fix okay there's always a solution so I gotta start by saying that and also if you need prayer you can always reach out to me if you don't know anybody probably in the faith or you don't attend a church or any something like that you always email me um if you need a specific prayer my email is julisa julisa designs.com if you need a specific prayer so this case is about the mom her name is Andrea Alar- Alarcon and she lived out of new jersey and this week uh, specifically on wednesday of this week beginning of the year um this mom took upon her hands to basically harm her uh her her husband and two kids and herself and there's this whole situation that they were dealing with right so let me read to you briefly and very discreet this article about what happened andrea alarcon um and you know, harm her husband, Ruben Alarcón, 51 years old, and her two daughters, Scarlett, nine years old, and Emma, six years old. And then she eventually harmed herself also, and fa- fatally, right? And they live in Lincrest Terrace, home um, in Union City, New Jersey. It says here that local sheriff, okay, this is how this is what people are dealing with right now. And people, you go on TikTok and people talk about how much the prices are going in grocery and things like that. There are people that cannot even afford a place to live, right? We look at all this, this is the whole situation with the immigrants coming to New York and to a lot of other cities. There's people struggling right now. And, you know, this is so crazy. I was saying we're going to talk about this. And, there are people struggling right now and we have to give to the poor that's our call in the bible that's our calling from god so a lot of the times this i was not even going to mention this but a lot of the times i'm feeling led to say this you know people are like you know you have to give your tithes so i can open the windows of heaven for you give your money to the church so that i can bless you you can also give to the poor right you it, just think about that the necessity a lot of the times you know this whole idea of give money to the to tithing so that you can get blessing but there are people struggling right now 
And something that I always say, you know, I love going to um, go for me. And when I talk about a story here, you guys have seen that I'm always sharing the link for a go for me account to help the families and people that are affected by it. There's so many people in need right now, people who are struggling. So if God put in your heart to help somebody and you're like, oh man, I have the money to give to, to the tithes, um, to give my 10% to the church or, you know, or I have money to buy somebody's groceries. Like what do you, what do you think God is going to say? And that's something that is not spoken in the church a lot. We are supposed to be helping the poor. We are supposed to help the people in need. It's not just give tight so that God can open the windows of heaven so you can have a lot of blessings. Okay, so let me go back to the story. That's a whole nother subject about tithing and all of that in itself. But this is a sad story. You know, we we lost a 51-year-old um, Ruben Alarcon. Emma, one of the daughters, was only six years old to go through something like that. And Scarlett, nine years old. And then eventually the mom, Andrea Alarcon, I believe she was 42. Very, very young, you know, all of them very young, right? And for her to do something like that, we eventually learned that the family's home that they've been living in for 15 years was in foreclosure. Okay, like I said, there's people struggling right now. People, we're going to work. It's not even enough to pay our bills. And we're, there's people struggling. And you have to go beyond the, hey, how are you? It's okay to go beyond and say, hey, let me know if you need prayer for anything. Okay, and a lot of the times, you know, don't just ask for prayer, you know, hey, um, if somebody said, you know, we're kind of struggling with grocery shopping, if God puts in your heart to help a family and buy them groceries that, you know, that week or something, do that. Okay, um, so what I'm saying about the whole situation leading up to this, this, their home was foreclosed in October 31st, you know, Halloween day, 2023. So up to those months, I can only imagine the stress that I guess as a family they weren't dealing with. And it's hard. I, I understand that it's hard when the family is dealing with financial issues and for that not to transpire throughout the home and also within the children, right? They, they pick up on that. They pick up on change behavior from mom and dad. So I'm sure it was probably very hard. And, you know, we don't know like Andrea's the mom's plan was maybe she gave them the best Christmas so that you know she, maybe she already thought about it who know but I'm gonna say um there's always a solution for things if you gotta go through a difficult situation where you have to move out of your home temporarily okay move into an apartment even smaller but you're still all together and you're able to probably afford the rent and you know, credit and debt is crazy. Can you imagine? Like, I was thinking about this the other day. When I went to college, all I don't want to say what year, but it was a long time ago. I was terrified. I'm like, man, I'm putting my, I'm putting, signing my name. I'm signing my name to all this money. I don't even know. You know, and there's something about walking by faith and, and all of that. And I believe in that. And I've been doing that in my life. And I try, you know, I pray to God all the time. Show me where you want me to walk by faith on this or the other. Take that step. Um, and I was like, man, it's so crazy because this is how you have to live life, right? You have to live by faith. There's always a solution. And I remember just not long ago, I got a letter saying some of my loans were dismissed. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if I, if they would have told me that back when I signed up for them, that I would have relieved that stress that I went through. Um, and like the, the years paying, paying it and all of that. But that's what, you know, you take a risk in life. And like I said, you put your faith in the Lord and it, there's always a solution. You know how many people are losing like their homes, their cars and things like that? It is a difficult time and people can shame you and all of that because there's always somebody who wants to point fingers. It's like, well, you should live within your means. You don't know every people's situation. Things can change very fast in the workplace, okay? Things can get crazy. It, it can take just one, one boss that leaves and goes to another company and they hire somebody new who doesn't like you. Things can change extremely fast in a workplace that you've been, regardless of how many years, regardless if you work overtime for them, regardless if you're a good employee. It takes 
very quickly for things to turn, right? So that's why you have to put your faith in the Lord and believe that um, there's always a solution for things, you know? And sometimes we see problems arise and we're like, man, there's no way out of this. This is crazy. Like, uh, you know, after all this year, maybe this family had had that house for so, so many years and then they're foreclosed. And, you know, it's probably like, wow, man, what have I, maybe I'm just giving my opinion here now. Maybe she thought, what am I, have I accomplished in my life? And look where I am right now. And I can't even like keep paying the house for my kids that they love or things. And it could have been anything, right? But all I'm saying that even so, eventually, you know, the kids will learn from that to see going through the struggle and then coming out of that. I came here with my mom, and my sister, like when we came, um, we didn't know. We went from house to house, from cousin to other cousin to uncles to this and the other, and sleeping on people's, you know, barrel rooms, I guess you can say, um, and sharing their stuff and things like that. And you know, by the third day, it gets really, it gets, the, the welcome gets very um, done very quickly when you do stuff like that. And I remember seeing my mom crying and saying, you know, I can't find work. I don't know what to do. And one day we were like in a park in the Bronx and it was so cold. And we were visiting her because we were living with our dad temporarily, but she was staying from cousin to cousin, um, you know, after that. And she was like, I can't find work. I don't know what to do. And she's like, I can't believe I came to this country with you guys and I can't you know, we were all, all three of us crying because when you see your leader, like your mom crying and you're so young, you're looking at that and you're like, wow, I don't know. Like if she's crying, I'm like, really, what are we going to do? Right. But then I remember that same week she spoke with um, one of her brothers that live here in Connecticut. And he's like, come here, see, maybe you can find work. And after like a few months, it was hard because you live with another family. It was hard. and But after a few months, we were living our own apartment. But I learned so much from my mom in that moment because um, even though she was crying and she she was trying so hard to get a job, I remember her going to places and applying. This is somebody who had a career and everything in the Dominican Republic and coming here with like not knowing anything. This goes to learn you're learning also as you listen to this about the immigrants that come here. These are not just um, people who have a drug addiction that live in the streets, you know, a lot of homeless and things like that. Anybody can be a homeless. Anybody can be an immigrant. Think about that. When we came here, like my mom had her career established over there in the Dominican Republic, but we saw an opportunity to come here and we have come and visit New York previous years and we're like we want to live there we love it right because in vacation time you everything always looks good when you come for vacation everybody's perfect everybody's welcoming and happy and giving you gifts right um and then it gets real so i learned so much from my mom too even though during this time we, we were going through a, a hardship i guess you can say and she couldn't find work but you know we move to connect Danbury, Connecticut, and she was able to find work like immediately and not just one job. Then there were other opportunities for her to babysit at home during the day and she would work the night shift and we saved enough to get a deposit for an apartment and within a few months, like the whole not having a place was history. You know, and it's like you learn some from dying. A lot of the times we're like families that they don't want to, the kids they notice things and they learn too you know because I remember stories like that I was so young too when we came here so I remember that so every struggle that you go through in life will lead you to something good you just have to have the faith that whatever comes your way God is there with you you have to just pray about it right so let me just continue to read here about this story about the Alarcon family that lost their their life, I guess you can say, early this week in New Jersey. Um, Local sheriff show up at the home to serve the inhibition notice around 10.30 on Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday, when they found all the four victims. Um, The weapon was also located near the woman's body. So I don't know if um, the whole situation, when it comes to, like, did, I, did the mom and dad knew that this was coming? Um, 
or maybe something was hidden, you know, some information was hidden. A lot of the times when, we, when we're dealing with something horrible, we're trying to hide details uh, from our loved ones because, I mean, if I reveal this, they're going to hate me forever or something like that. But you have to understand, the truth will set you free. When you're honest about something, even though it like, people will always appreciate honesty over anything. Just be honest and say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. Maybe something happened here that she, you know, she, she didn't want to tell the husband or some, like, and I'm talking about her because they're saying it was her who did it, right, Andrea? And maybe she was hiding financial issues. You know, there are a lot of men who do that too. A lot of men in marriages, in, in you know, family men, they hide financial things from the wife and then they go crazy. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Um, we are to share our struggle with people. Of course, you got to know who you talk to because there's always going to, like I said earlier, there's always going to be that person who doesn't understand what somebody being vulnerable with you is. And they're always going to judge before they offer help, right? And they're always going to condemn and judge instead of saying, hey, let's pray about it. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, there's always a solution and God is always always there and God is going to lead us eventually to to make the right decision and whatever it is that we're dealing with. So I wanted to share this story to tell you about that, right? The whole message about this episode, this video is about whatever it is that you're dealing with in life, God is always ready to help you with any struggles. And like I said, there's always a solution. No matter how the enemy is the one who always tells you there's no way out. He always say that, but you know, God is bigger than anything, than anything that you can face in life. So pray to your creator in Jesus name. Thank you so much, everybody for coming back to my channel and listening to the podcast. Have a good day. God bless.